And good morning, guys, and welcome back to another Subi Shapes video. Guys, thank you so much for clicking into my link and joining me today here in the middle of September, guys. It's beautiful. It's a Tuesday, right? It's at that point in the week where you're just, you're ready to get some stuff done. And today we're getting it done, guys. We're going to be using the winning razor and comparing it to the Henson Titanium Aggressive Plate, guys. I am thrilled to be doing this video. I am so excited to be doing this video and I'm so excited that you're here joining me for it. So guys, again, thank you so much. And if you haven't done so yet, right, you're never seen a video from me or maybe you haven't actually hit that sub button, please go below, do it for me. We're getting a little bit bigger every single day. And honestly, guys, the reach that we're getting is not possible without you. So thank you so much. I know we do things a little weird here. We do things a little out of the box and maybe a little unorthodox, but thank you guys for making it possible and for making it fun. All right. So today, guys, I'm going to be showcasing not only how awesome these two razors shave because they're phenomenal. Both of them are fantastic. But I wanted to showcase the winning razor polished, guys. I took the time and I polished mine. And I'm trying to get into focus here so you guys can see. Look at just how beautiful this razor really is. Truly polished up. And guys, I am a novice. I had never tried to mirror polish anything ever in my life. I used a Dremel tool. <laughs> you can see my fingers in the reflection on the base cap. Oh my goodness, guys. I think I truly accomplished a mirrored finish on the beautiful winning razor. Guys, this is a $55 stainless steel razor that I just took a Dremel tool to and I went down and I got like a couple of those different compounds, the green, white, brown, um, black, and I just ran it through the compounds and that was the final product, guys. I am beyond excited with how that turned out. I mean, no, it's not perfect by any means, guys, but holy cow, look, you can see my light. <laughs> Really cool, really awesome. And I want to talk to you guys about that because it's the funniest story. It's the funniest story, guys. Absolutely great. Um, today, we're going to be using, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we're going to be using a &E Kaizen, guys. And Kaizen, for me, has changed. It's an interesting thing. For me, the scent, guys, it started off as like an aquatic, and that's really what I smelled. And as I've used it more and more and more, and I went back and actually reread the scent notes, for me, it started smelling more citrusy. I don't know why that is. It just changed. All of a sudden, my nose started smelling more citrus. And now I'm getting like a lemon and mandarin kind of smell underneath like a neroli or something. A bergamot. Those two combined with the sweet citrus. And now this is smelling very citrusy to me. And I'm not going to lie. I still get a little bit of aquatic to it. But very citrusy, very nice smell, guys. And we're going to be pairing that again with the splash. And the splash for me retains that mandarin and lemon pill beautiful scent very nice very citrusy and i can see where people say it's sweet now before i wasn't getting sweet i don't know my nose has changed and that's why i don't talk a ton about soap scents because my nose is changing still and i get different things that other people don't guys i've already got my lather generated for today and we're using my buddy colin clafton's and i mentioned buddy here you guys can see let's let's check it out let's let's see how i did on the smell cycle guys look at this the smells coming from this brush are fantastic. I love the blue on blue, right? That's a blue on blue ever ready with a badger brush, guys, that Colin Clafton personally gelled together so that it can just really whip up in a beautiful lather for me. Oh, yep, yep. Lemon and mandarin. I get a ton of lemon and mandarin now. It's the weirdest thing, and I love it. And we're gonna be using the Symmetric Pottery Bowl, guys. That's in the Symmetric Pottery Bowl. And we're using a little Parasso pre-shave because this so soap does have apple in it. And I do notice when I use this as a pre-shave, I, I get more apple out of the lather once it's applied. Kind of interesting. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's battle these things. Um, I wanna talk about the razors for the battle and why I'm doing it. So these razors look extremely similar on the head caps, guys. Very similar on the head caps. Sure, the winning razor has the little um, cutouts on the side of the cap, guys, so that your fingers have a place to sit when you're unscrewing it that the Henson does not. Um, the Henson's head is a little bit thinner. You do get about, I don't know, three millimeters more head size on the winning razor versus the Henson. 
you also will notice that the Henson guys is a full four inches length. Whereas this is 3.75, the Henson is definitely longer. And I've heard people mention they either love the Henson handle or they detest it, okay? I want to mention I like the Henson handle. For me, I thought the Henson handle is one of the most perfect handles I've ever handled. I like the thin grip and I like the long longness of it. I like that it's um, tapered. And I also really like these grooves, okay? The grooves work for me. There's a lot of guys that are right now that are using this razor handle and they prefer the winning razor because it's thicker. It's definitely more um, hefty. And the winning razor's handle kind of, it's got a very specific feel, guys. These grooves are not very thick, whereas they're much thicker on this side. But they can come across as maybe a little sharper on the titanium. They don't feel as quietly um, beveled as they do on the winning razor side. Okay, you can see this is definitely a more intricate, ornate handle style. Where this is very basic. You do get the magnet on the bottom of the winning razor that can pick up blades and things like that. You know, you can come in here and just grab some blades that are sitting around. I do like that functionality to it. You do not get that on the Henson, right? The Henson does not have that. The Henson is also rounded, guys, on the bottom, so you cannot sit it on your countertop, whereas you can sit this on your countertop and it won't fall over. Kind of Some things that I like, some things I don't like. I like being able to sit it up, but I do feel that the rounded edge here is very nice in the hand, whereas this kind of feels like it just goes flat, right? You can actually feel the flatness to that. And it's just a different feel. Neither is bad, um, they are different. I will mention this is 119 grams fully assembled from the manufacturer, and this is 70, guys? The Henson is 70, okay? And for me, 70 grams is the number. That is the number I try for my Thorn that I just absolutely love. It is 69 grams, right? The Thorn is like kind of, I think, where I learned, that, you know, like the true form and then anything above that I find kind of uncomfortable. This was definitely a learning experience going from 70 to 120, right? Almost two times the, the razor weight. Um, I will mention these both have blades in them right now, guys, because I wanted to showcase the blade gap and blade exposure of this and where your skin is going to sit, okay? Hopefully that this is looking okay. You guys are seeing um, both, like I said, have blades to them right now. You can see that there's pretty much a little, they're almost identical in exposure. This is the aggressive Henson. Um, but on the right side, you probably have a little bit more exposure than you do on the left on the Henson. And when you look at gap, guys, the Henson probably, it looks like sixes to me. I, I think the gap is almost identical, guys. So what you really get is just a little bit more blade fill and a little more exposure on the winning razor side that you do do not have on the uh, Henson side. Just a little bit, not enough to really make or break the shave. Guys, I have used both these razors now. I use this one about six times and for full head shaves, and I've used this one about, I don't know, 26 times, <laughs> 30 times, lots of times, and like 20 body shaves. Lots of, lots of use on the Henson titanium side, and it is a good shave. I can tell you this is a 14 hour shave for me. I get in bed, and I'm starting to feel and see, I'm getting that noticeable, like you can see the grain coming back. Winning razor, guys. I had an 18 hour where I got in bed and you couldn't see the grain follicle coming back. This is definitely a closer shave by by two hours, three hours. I don't know if that matters to anyone. I kind of like that because I look at the three C's, right? Cost, closeness, and the comfort of the shave. For comfort wise, guys, we're gonna do a cross compare today just to double check myself but I believe this to be slightly more comfortable to me on the skin due to the weight. It's really smooth. You don't get as much um, movement from the razor head, but it's marginal. Closeness, guys, this one slightly. Again, I get a slightly longer shave. Again, it could be just because of how, where it's sitting, the ex extra exposure. This is a slightly better shave for me previously. And the cost, guys, 250 for this guy right here when they made it. They don't make it anymore or they're not making it currently. They're planning, I, from what they've told me, there's a production line coming. This is 55 bucks. Now, there's something to be said about, you know, first, you know, coming into the market and being an innovator. Henson is absolutely the innovator of the concept of having a flat beveled edge there, right? That beveled edge is what really sets Henson apart from a lot of the current manufacturing DE companies because you set them to the surface and you shave. It's a place and pull, as I like to say. Place and pull. Eh, I think it's cool. I like it. I, I know a lot of people have said it's a newbie thing. For me, it's a lazy shaver thing. I think it produces lazy shavers because 
you put it to the surface and you just shave. You don't have to worry about anything. And I tend to be one of those people that finds myself wanting a lazy shave once in a while. So for me, these are both very good lazy shavers. You don't have to have skill to use either of these razors, but both will bite with the wrong form, right? If you do this, you're gonna have bleeding all over. So you want, you still wanna exercise as much technique as you possibly can with these razors, right? They both do demand technique. Um, and they can train technique. That's another thing I really like about these is I've been asked several times, people have said, you know, why do you support companies that are coming up with new modern things and they've never been done before? How do we know that they're gonna be good long-term? Things like that. These bring in new shavers, guys. These bring in people that have never ever wet shaved before or are interested in long, you know, um, eco shaving, that are really interested in sustainable shaving. I think it's awesome. It brings in a younger crowd that doesn't have to learn as much to take go, to get a good shave. Plus, it does teach what it takes to use one of these razors. So when they do pick up one in the future, that's a vintage or maybe a slightly more uh, technical version, they'll have the skill set to do it, right? I think that's cool. And I like that the companies like this are producing things like this. All right, so that's the specs. You guys understand kind of what these things look like, um, blades and all. Um, I want to mention again, this Henson or the um, winning razor on my right, guys, I did not pay for. This was donated to the channel as a volunteer of the Sensei program from them. I did not know I was getting this, okay? So this was a nice surprise, but it's a razor I was wanting to buy due to the shape, okay? And when they reached out, guys, I honestly was like really excited because I just wanted to like interact and get, you know, be a part of the catalog that shows, you know, the basics of wet shaving. And so for them to offer this, I thought was really cool. I did pay the full 250 for this razor on my left. And again, I did not mind doing that because it's a great razor. It hurt, but it was worth it, okay? That's the kind of shaves I've, been, I've gotten with this. It's, it was worth the cost to me. Now, I owned the aluminum. I do want to mention that I paid the $70 for the aluminum variation. I gave it to my sister-in-law. For me, guys, it wasn't a close enough shave, okay? I went back and forth. I shimmed it. I had videos on it. I got, I got it to finally work for me. But in the end, it was worth picking up the, the more aggressive head plate for me and the stubble type that I have. A lot of people can get away with the medium. I just needed a little bit more to get that closeness on my head. All right, so that's why we're gonna be comparing the aggressive versus the winning razor. I'm gonna go below with you guys and show you how we're gonna load our blades up. Here we are guys on the Subi Hat Cam. Today we've got the Henson Titanium on my right in the aggressive plate with the winning razor on my left. And this is stainless steel guys. And they shave extremely similar and today we're gonna be doing a head shave. So I'm gonna show you how I load these razors typically. I'm going to grab myself some PermaSharp razor blades, guys. These are the ones that I use. You don't have to use them. There's tons of DE blades. These are the ones that work really well for me in both those razors. And I'm going to snap my blades in half, guys. Both of these razors, they cover the end caps of the wings of the DE blades. Usually we have to cut these off, but we don't have to cut them off, guys, with these razors. These are both three-piece razor designs. So you're gonna unscrew the handle and the base plate and top cap disassemble, guys. Very simple. And the Henson guys, I really like. I do enjoy how easy it is to load up the Henson, right? You just take your blade, slam it right there in the top cap. Now, for me, guys, I prefer loading the second razor blade into the top cap. And Henson reached out and said, you know, we don't recommend our users do that. They actually told me that. They, they sent me an email and said, you know, we don't recommend users stack or do half the e razor shapes and i said yeah but i do so i this is uh on me guys if it doesn't work but i, I have done it like this probably 50 times and i like the way it shapes now the henson is different than the winning razor guys and the fact that it generates a lot of torque and pressure inside of the head cap it is very tight and when you're putting it together you want to make sure that everything is lined up nice and flush and square. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to disassemble afterwards. I like to grab a little shim, guys, a little plastic shim. And I always put that into my Henson. Personally, you don't have to do that. I like to do that. And then what I've been doing, guys, is I tighten it down pretty considerably. Because the Henson's designed to have a lot of torque on that razor blade. And that's kind of where that's going to look, guys. Right there. You guys can see there's definitely some gap to it and definitely a little bit of exposure. This is, again, the aggressive head cap. 
Um, you can tell that there's no camphor on the side, no, you know, cutouts. So that it's a little harder to grab and to unscrew and to put together, but definitely not too problematic. There you go. Um, we're gonna do the same thing with this, with the winning razor, guys. We're gonna just put our fingers on the sides and I do like, guys, I really like how the head cap is easily to, easy, is easy to hold because of these cuts. These cutouts really are like a nice quality of life feature. Um, what we're gonna do is we're, I've already got my blades, guys, snapped for time purposes because it's the same process. We're gonna just stack one razor blade. And again, they don't recommend that you do it this way. I just prefer it as a head shaver. I, it, with one side, guys, I don't have the chances of accidentally catching the backside of my ear with the backside of the blade or, you know, when I'm running it on the backside of my head where I can't see. It's easier for me to only have one side loaded. And I do load two blades, two full blade edges on top of each other, guys, again, because I feel like it produces more pressure inside the head cap and more pressure on the blades. And that rigidity really helps with the amount of, uh, the amount of pressure and the amount of smoothness and the amount of irritation that I receive. It's a lot less irritating for me. I believe it reduces chatter. There we go. And you guys can see kind of similarly how, and then I'll also with this guys, I'll torque it all the way up, right? I put some pressure and then I do a slight turn, like a one eight turn to open it up a little bit more. And I know that John and a few other people mentioned they do the same way. So you guys go, you guys can see that the blades are actually extremely similar and where their um, placement is and the gap that is inside of them. And even the way that they sit in front of the, you know, the beveled edge. All right, let's go shave and see how these blades actually do. And I hope that helps guys. I, I know that it's pretty basic. We're just loading, you know, three piece razors up, but for people that have never seen how I um, Subi stack or for people that are really interested in seeing the internals of the um, razors at a better angle, I feel like it's very useful. So hopefully that helps you guys kind of see the razors inside and out and kind of what they offer. Guys, I'm gonna start wetting my head and I wanted to talk to you today about the razor polishing that I did on the winning razor. So my buddy Colin Claffin is a wizard, all right? He is, the, he's the guy that did my brush, but he also offers um, razor polishing. He's in my affiliate links below, guys, along with Leaf. And I did that for him because he's been an amazing contributor to the channel. He has provided giveaway, he provided a brush for the giveaway. And he's also a person that's just reached out and been very friendly and been very nice and supportive of the channel. You know, like New York City um, shaving on uh, the comments below is always so supportive. There's so many of you guys that are super supportive that have always, you know, yeah, had my back and just been down for whatever weird thing I'm, I've got producing, you know, whatever I'm coming out with. And it just come for, to make me feel good. And I am so appreciative of all of you. And Colin has been one of those guys that not only has done all that, guys, but he reached out and he said, you know, I'd like to be a contributor to your channel, whatever, it, whatever I need to do to support you. And that's awesome, guys. And that kind of, I just, I wanted to put his link down there. And that's exactly what Leaf did. Leaf was like, we see you like our product. You're kind of unique. You're a little bit odd. And on top of all those things, we like that you're, you know, willing to experiment. And, you know, they, they offered to do the same thing for me. So I, I, I put both their links into my channel, guys. I am appreciative of both of them. And I was on FaceTime with Colin, right? That's the kind of, that's the kind of relationship we have. We were doing FaceTime. We were chatting it up and he goes, oh, I got to show you my winning razor. You know, you like the winning razor. Let me show you. Cause he's a, he's a part of this sensei program with me. And he gets on, he shows me guys, he shows me his winning razor with a perfect polish on it. I mean, we are talking just like, like beyond professional grade, beautiful. Every little scratch, everything gone. Every manufacturing mark absolutely obliterated. Just a perfect shine, right? And it got me thinking. I was like, well, if you have a perfect one, I wonder how I could do it. <laughs> yeah, if I could homebrew it. And we were, he was kind of laughing. And I, I, I just, I, I decided to take it on myself to try it out with the tools that I had at hand, right? Because I'm not an expert, guys. I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional polisher. I am not. So I decided to make the winning razor, um, you know, it, nicer for me. And the only reason I did this, guys, I know some people said, you know, do you think it'll help with the surface tension, things like that? We're gonna find out. But the reason why I did it is because it's special. I think it's a special razor. I think it has a lot to offer. I think it's a great price at that, um, at the $55, it's, it's remarkable. It's, it's crazy good. 
and I wanted it to really shine. I wanted it to be like man jewelry, right? And I know that's not fair because there's a lot of women that wet shave, but I wanted it to be man jewelry for me, all right? This is, <laughs> I just think it's so cool to have that high polish, high sheen from a product that had kind of a more matted, more unfinished raw material styled look. I think that turned out really cool. Let's see guys, let's check this out and see how it shaves. See if Colin inspired me to make a better tool. Guys, I can actually feel the polish edge. The polish edge actually feels different. Wow. Yes, it does make a difference. I can say that. What in the world? Guys, I want to lie to you. It is a phenomenal shaver. It is one of those shaves that yeah, I have 30 hours of growth and it just makes it feel so smooth and so easy, guys. So smooth and so easy. I absolutely love how this thing shaves. And this is with the grain. And I know a lot of people mentioned that their with the grain pass, guys, didn't feel um, normal or something. They said it felt kind of odd. And I've mentioned this a couple times now on the channel. I don't feel like it's odd to me at all. What I do feel, guys, with this with the grain pass is it usually doesn't take down as much as the Henson does. I don't know if that is the way that the blade is shaped up front, but I think the Henson actually takes down more up, you know, as you're doing the width of grain. Okay, so that's one pass, guys. And you can see we are extremely close. And we're just going to bring over some of that lather. And today, like, I, like I've been doing on all my BBS battle shaves, guys, and this is for your viewing pleasure, not my skin pleasure. I'm going to shave the area and then take the razor that's dueling and reshave over that area to see if I get any stubble off. I don't believe I will be able to get any stubble off with the um, Henson on this side. I just don't because of how close this shave is, guys. Now, I do not recommend doing it that, you know, at your own house because it does come at the cost of my skin. I do feel slight irritation the day after when I've done that, when I've because it's like doing one too many passes because you're already BBS and then you go over that BBS surface and I definitely don't think it's as comfortable. I'm just doing a couple little touch-up spots, guys. Very easy to use. Very And the reason I really like this, guys, I really like that um, little bit of blade fill. I'm going to mention it does absolutely help to have it polished. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not saying you have to take on a polishing project. Colin does offer it. I'm going to mention that. Colin does offer it. Um, I'm not going to say that like it's make or break for the razor. The razor is great as is. Wow. Holy tarnations. What in the... Yep, that's fantastic. That's like a Saturday night shave for me, guys. That is going out in the town. Oh, the worst part about having a shave this good, guys, and being a person that works on a computer is I don't get to go to show off this beautiful shave. Oh, so good. Perfect. And I'm going to come in right here and just tidy up my um, sidelines. My sideburns, yeah. But you guys saw, that was very easy, it was effortless. And I've mentioned this a couple times, there's a lot of guys I've been talking to that are using this solely as a head shaver. For that reason, it's because... <laughs> that's the kind of shave, guys. It's incredible. It's so smooth, guys. It's so smooth. And it's, you do it with like, like I can't even generate like proto lather from the stuff that it's on my head. There's just nothing there. It's awesome. It's really, really good. And that was only a two pass, right? Two pass, minor cleanup, very minor cleanup. And for me, the Henson Aluminum guys was like a six pass. And then I started shimming it and putting an injector blades into it just to try to get more out of it. But this aggressive one's a different story, guys. And I'm going to actually <laughs> add some water because this aggressive does have some bite. It does have some kick and it does knock the stubble down. And that's the reason I bought it, guys, is I could see the Henson had something figured out and I wanted to see and test the aggressive out. And guys, I do want to mention this again. IMCDB just mentioned it. A lot of other reviewers have mentioned it. 
uh, if you want, you can reach out to Henson. I have done so three different times. I believe they should be making this in the aluminum variation. I don't know why they don't offer the aggressiveness in an aluminum option. I think it's dumb. I think it's it's kind of like a money grab to me because they want you to buy their higher end version for a more expert tool when they really don't need to have that as the thing. They have the mild and medium. Why not go with the aggressive? I don't know. I can't tell you guys, but I like the aggressive head so much better. Again, this is sit to the surface and shave. Now, if you're a person that does not like, guys, if you do not like um, like razors that are light, this may not be your jam. My buddy Rex that got me hooked on these, what he told me was that this razor for him takes a little bit more effort. Um, he's like, I get a really good shave from both, but the um, it had to be a little bit safer and cautious with the aggressive. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. Let me show you this. Dang it, I lost some of it. Take a look at this. And that's with the grain, okay? And that's on the 30 hours of stubble, 29 hours of stubble that we had going on. It is with, guys, with the grain. This side's so good. But this other side is, it's feeling great, guys. It's feeling super good. And I do um, think that I get comparable shaves from both i think where this one and the other one don't feel quite as sim um, the same guys is against the grain the winning razor kind of feels like it's cutting a little bit closer against the grain than the henson and i don't know why that is the case so that's two passes two ish and i'm going to go against the grain now on this side I've mentioned this before in other subsequent videos, guys, but I really, really love how the Henson's um, handle feels in my hand. I just, I, I really like it. I've used it with other razors because I like it so much. I actually put it on the winning razor for one of my shaves. I really like the Henson handle for me. Check it out, guys. Check it out. You can see it's knocking it down, and it's thick stubble coming off, and it's very coarse. Um, it's like a nice like sediment line, right? You can actually see that line in the lather, and that means it's going to be a very close shave all day. And I love busting this razor out because it's one of those ones that I was so excited to get, and I put so much money into buying it, and it was like one of the ones I had to apologize to the wife, but the wife really likes the Henson, so it was like an easy, it was a good razor for both of us to own, and we both prefer the um, aggressive guys. It's weird. I actually told Henson that because they wanted to know um, how my wife felt about it, and we both, guys, we both preferred the aggressive. And it's one of those razors, I think it's, we don't press. You know, we do come in, we use good form and technique, even though it's one of those lazy shavers, you know, we still use good technique. But if you're a body shaver or anything like that, if you're a person that um, is getting into the craft and trying to get into armpits and things like that, this is a very easy razor to do that with. It's perfect. Okay. We are perfect now. That is a BBS shave on both sides. The Henson and the winning razor did phenomenal. I'm going to do two things today, guys. We're going to do two things that we don't usually do. And that is going to be cross-lapping, you know, going on the opposite side because it's a true battle. We have to see. And I'm also going to test really quick with some alum because I'm really curious. I've never done this. So I really, I'm very, very curious to see how it, how it lines up. Oh, I forgot to do it on my side, my, my, my ear, guys. Sorry, give me one second. I forgot to do this one spot. Okay, there we go. You guys saw how fast that was? I love that. Check this out. Just go like this. <laughs> Smack my finger a couple times, a couple 25 times. And it never bleed because it doesn't have a blade in there. Because as a subie newbie, I only load half the razor. And again, Henson does not want you to do that. They they told me. <laughs> they reached out. They did tell me. Okay. Both sides are perfect. Both sides, there's, there's no clear winner. This part of my head right here, guys, where I get a lot of growth midway through the day is a little bit closer on this side than this side. The barely. I would say the Henson, though, felt almost smoother because of the way it went across the, the with, with the grain. It knocked more down. So against the grain, it didn't have as much friction. 
But then against the grain, even though it was a little less smooth, the, the result on this side is slightly smoother in my trouble spots with the, with the heavier head. I'm also curious because the weight pushing down makes it so that on that spot right here that's really tough is smoother than this side. If it, if it keeps the head to the surface better, I don't know. It could be against the grain. It's, it's, it's getting through more. But both of these guys, I mean, I, I kind of am, I'm kind of dreading going over a second time because it's so good. Oh, that's going to suck. It's such a good shave, guys. All right, for you guys, I'll do it. Let's get into it. We got to stick with the standards. Oh. It's so good. This side still, though, it does feel marginally closer. I can actually feel where this side definitely feels. I don't know. It just feels a little closer to me. Yeah, yeah, just barely. But there's no hair stubble, guys. It's just a weird feeling on my skin that this side feels marginally closer. Okay, we're going to get on there and we're going to throw in a little more pre-shave and we're going to do one more pass, which is just, don't do that, guys. I'm not recommending doing, when you're this close, don't go over the surface. That's begging for irritation the next day. So you guys, if I don't film tomorrow, you'll know why. Because I am recovering from massive irritation. <laughs> Because we knocked down this double and then we did it over again. But I really want to show you guys just where these razors compare and where they compete. And I feel like for me, the Henson probably is still like the more premium feel to me. All right. I know that sounds dumb. It definitely has like that more ornate handle. I really like the handle. The weight's nice. And I would say per stroke, it just felt smoother. I'm surprised because I really thought in my hand that the Henson wouldn't be smoother than the winning razor. It just is a little bit as far as the actual cutting motion with the grain. But then again, I, I, really against the grain is where it changes. You can feel the hair follicle getting destroyed by the winning razor, whereas the aggressive plate, guys, it doesn't quite feel like it's destroying that hair follicle. But then you get less closeness on the surface. At least that's how it feels. That's the perceived fill. Okay, we're going to grab that Henson and we're going to go um, we're gonna do it against the grain pass. We're gonna go as aggressive as we can and we're gonna see how it does on this right side. There's not a hair follicle on there. This is hilarious. It feels like I'm ice skating. You know that whole like when you're a kid and they tell you to like shave the balloon? <laughs> it's what it feels like. I feel like I'm just shaving a balloon, guys. Look at this. There's not any stubble anywhere in there. Well, I can tell you, at least I know how to shave my head. And is that it? It's extremely smooth. Extremely smooth. There may be one or two hairs that I missed in the very middle of my head, but as far as this side goes, there there was no hair guy. No no hair. None. Zero. It, it went through and shaved effortlessly. And I wouldn't say it actually cut anything down. Let's look on the opposite side now. Let's start here and kind of go across and do the same thing. I'm going to start like this so it's equal. I can feel there's a little bit of um, just some marginal guys. Yep. Right there especially. Just marginal. Yep, marginal amounts of stubble coming off. It's weird looking. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera. Um, there is like little set, like little sediment at the very bottom. It almost looks like skin follicles, guys, but it's not. It is like, it is a actual hair follicle, and I can feel it coming off the surface against the grain. Just barely. It's a little uncomfortable to be honest. Cause it's like having to go through like this other very finite amount of stuff. I actually don't like how it feels going through the second time at all. I do not like that. And again, if you guys are curious, I am using very little um, pressure. I don't have any stubble to protect my head right now. 
You got a little bit right there. And yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this. There's like very finite amounts of stubble in the lather. Very finite. A couple little baby hairs, a couple little teeny tiny things. But it's very, very, very close. This is just cutting a little bit closer on the width of grain. Just a titch, guys. Just barely. Yeah. I'm going to say that the winning razor is definitely still the closer shaver. But it's so minor that I don't know if you would really even notice. I did see noticeable stubble in the lather with the against the grain pass on the Henson side, guys. And I could feel it going through it. Whereas the Henson, it felt kind of like it was ice skating. It felt like it was sliding around and like it wasn't going anywhere. I feel like that biting feeling I was getting is definitely evidence that it's a little closer on this side. Now, if that matters to you or not, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't be the judge for you guys. Is the $250 worth it? Do you, do you like to handle more titanium versus stainless, right? You get into those kind of battles. I am not here to make that decision for you. I, I am a person that really believes in cost, closeness, and, and comfort. Both of these razors produce very close shaves, very comfortable shaves, and very, very consistent shaves um, at pr a price that one is like too good to be true. And the other is a little steep, but you're getting something that never existed. You guys are, got to understand Henson developed it. They invented this concept. And so for me, it was worth buying because it was unique. And now that it's been kind of, we don't want to say knocked off. This is the splash guys. But now that it is more available and more readily available, you have to ask yourself, is the price worth being buying the first time, you know, first product that was on to market? It's really the, this is the question. I think they're both great shaves. I think they're both very pretty razors. And honestly, guys, you're going to get a good shave with either of them that's lazy, lazy shaves. But I wanted to show that the aggressive Henson is really where this stacks up, right? That is how, and even on the closeness, you're going to get a little closer with this razor. But there is minor, more blade fill to this razor than there is this razor. It's your choice, guys. Your choice. Um, you, I'll let you guys be the decider for which one you prefer. I'm probably going to be, I, I, I don't want, I'm not getting rid of either of these. They're both ones I'd reach for. But the winning razor is probably the one I'd reach for more often just because I like the closeness I get from it. Simply just based on I get a longer shave. Guys. This has been a Subi Shave battle. You know me, I try to be honest, transparent, and give you guys my opinions. Maybe they don't match yours, but I just try. I hope you have a great day. Tuesday's here, it's going nice, and I hope yours does as well. Thank you for joining me. We'll be in touch. Bye, guys!